Hello again, and welcome back. Um, at the moment, I can't really go very far. Turley and Ox to the north are, uh, are closed uh, for repair. The locks uh, back that way, southwest um, in Wolverhampton, they're also closed for repair. And I can't really go beyond Penkridge because there's a lock there that's closed for repair. So I'm sort of stuck in this little little triangle. Um, but that's okay. Uh, you know, it's a really, really lovely part of the country. Um, and I'm just enjoying my time here. Uh, so as I can't really do a travel vlog, uh, I thought I might um, just have a look around the village. I'm back in Brood, by the way. So why don't we go and have a look around the village? It's really pretty, and if you're a boater passing through, it's well worth stopping and having a look at. Okay, let's go and have a look. Brie is an old Celtic term uh, which means hill or hillside so Brie wood or brood as it's pronounced um, simply means wood on a hill. The canal through brood is set in a cutting so we'll just climb these steps to access the village by bridge 14. It's sad to say that ten days before recording this a body was found in the canal, exactly where I'm moored now. So, heartfelt condolences to the family concerned. On top of Bridge 14 is... The Bridge Inn, uh, the one with the laundrette. There's also a, a good number of other pubs and uh, tea rooms in Brood. You can tell the village is going to be tasteful, can't you? People even have coordinating houses and cars. And yes, they even have a grammar school. One of the things that makes Brood so interesting is the vastly diverse range of architectural styles, spanning the 14th century to the modern day. And nowhere is this more apparent than Dean Street. The central section of this timber framed building, which is now called Old Smithy Cottages, was once a single story hall dating from 1350. And it's so nice to see all the old Victorian gas lamps which have been preserved around the village. Other buildings on the street are mainly late 16th century or early 17th century. This house was once the Admiral Rodney pub, and nope. As far as I can tell, he had no connection with Brood whatsoever. Now you'll notice that many houses in Brood have bricked up windows, such as this one. The window tax was introduced in England in 1696, and houses with more than 10 windows paid an extra 200% tax. So, obviously, many householders just bricked up their windows. The church, St Mary the Virgin and St Chad, was begun in the early 13th century, with changes made in the 14th century and the 16th century. Radical changes were made to the church in the 18th and 19th centuries. The tower has a peal of eight bells. There's an extensive and interesting graveyard for those of you who like that sort of thing. Up until 1872, the curfew bell tolled each evening at 8 o'clock between All Hallowtide, that's Halloween, and Candlemas, which is February the 2nd. Brews Market was granted a licence in 1221, and there were markets every week up until 1851. In 1834, the London to Liverpool coach, called Emerald, passed through Brood daily in each direction and stopped at the Lion. That's not it, by the way. 
but it does take us on to Stafford Street, where there's another small supermarket, an excellent traditional butcher's licensed to sell game, and yet another pub. Facing Stafford Street is the ornate Gothic Speedwell Castle. It's claimed that William Rock won a huge amount of money in the 1730s on a horse called Speedwell and built this with the proceeds. Apparently, tunnels lead from here under the marketplace to various hotels and pubs. The Mansion House, on the corner of Newport Street and School Road, is a group of timber-framed buildings dating from 1648. But I've got to admit, I'm not entirely convinced by the pink house. I think it's the wrong colour pink. OK, so there you have it. For boaters, brooders, a couple of small supermarkets, a butcher's and a grocer's, post office, tea rooms, barber shops and hairdressers, a laundry, pubs and a wealth of history. The moorings are pretty good and television reception is fine, but do beware, phone and internet is pretty poor. I hope you've enjoyed this tour around one of our canal villages. If so, please give it the thumbs up. Okay, see you next time.